The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Your clients may want different things from retirement, but share a common need, income. Challenger's innovative lifetime income options are designed for today's retirees. With guaranteed regular income payable for life, regardless of how long your clients live, Challenger's lifetime income options help to manage longevity risks in a way many other investments can't. Help more clients do more, live more, create more. Contact your Challenger BDM or visit challenger.com.au forward slash portfolio dash outcomes. For a retirement portfolio that can deliver more, read and consider the Challenger Lifetime Annuity, Liquid Lifetime, PDS and TMD from challenger.com.au. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I've got Phil Thompson from Sky Wealth uh, sitting in a room with me. It's not often that I'm recording a podcast across the table from someone like that. We're normally, normally on Teams or something in different locations. Phil, thanks for, for stopping by the office so we can have a chat. Thanks for having me. You've been on the podcast a few times before. I think I searched up maybe like a year or two back. Can you recall how back? Maybe Nashi interviewed me a while ago. I probably would have been Ben doing it, yeah. So I've taken over Ben's seat in, in doing the podcast. But other than the chat we've had been having since we pressed record, we've never actually spoken. Yeah. I've kind of been in these circles for, for a while. So thanks for coming in. Um, for those that don't know Sky Wealth, tell us a bit about Sky Wealth. Yeah, so our business, we just do insurance only advice. So um, I went through a journey as an advisor, took over a business many moons ago, doing holistic advice and and kind of went through a journey of getting a bit disenchanted with advice and the process and trying to work with young clients. But how do we make that cost effective for our business? How do we charge effectively to the clients and, and provide a lot of value? Um, and... And just kept on, but felt like biting my head against the wall yeah. uh, in that space. And so I knew I needed to make a change with the Life Insurance Framework Commission's dropping. The, I saw there was a great opportunity there to move into that space mm-hmm. um, because, you know, the bet I made was that a lot of advisors would move out of insurance given that commissions had halved, you know, complexity of underwriting has gone up significantly. Um, we're all small businesses interfacing with massive institutions who are still using paper-based documents. Like it was, it's just a very archaic world. And so I thought, you know, how do I try and bring some efficiencies in that insurance-only advice space? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, from 2021 onwards, we've just done insurance-only um, advice. Um, and it's, yeah, it's going really well. Did you do a bit of, so with that, try to deal with the younger demographic that generally the stereotype, at least in financial advice, is there's a lot of insurance work that you're doing for them. Were you doing a bit of insurance, a fair bit of insurance work before deciding to be insurance only? No. So the the business that I was running had quite a few pre-retirees. Retirees. So our business revenue, 10% of it was insurance. Yes. So it wasn't actually a big portion of our business at all beforehand. Yeah. Um, I, I personally was a little bit hesitant recommending insurance when it was at 110% because it was always this little awkward conversation in my head. Hey, I'm getting paid more than your first year's premium. It's like that's just a, a difficult conversation. Oh, I found it difficult. Yeah. Um, now, would I love to go back there? Possibly because it's, you know, I understand why those don't, you know, why we had to have remuneration as high as it was. And, you know, it, it did facilitate an ecosystem that, that we don't have um, today. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it made up ten percent of our revenue, so it was pretty small. Yep. And so is, is Sky Wealth that same business, and you've changed things, or have you, did you shut it down? Did you leave? Like, how, how did you get from that business where you're doing pre-retiree type work, only ten percent is uh, insurance uh, commissions revenue, whatever you want to call it, 
through to now just being one hundred percent insurance business. Yeah, so we, so it's, it's effectively the same entity. Yeah, that we, I, I knew I was going to do a rebrand, so it was trading under Thompson Financial Services. Yeah, I knew that wasn't a long term name for the business. Um, so we transitioned to go. All right, we want to work with young clients, insurance, and a bit of super advice because we felt like, okay, hey, can we? Can we separate those two? Probably not. It's a bit pretty difficult to um, to separate them. And then over time, the, the desire for our clients just to need insurance advice and happy with their you know industry super fund um, and working with a licensee, you know, how do we actually scope it out? Um, and so went insurance only and, and went for about a year going, I'll kind of have two businesses, you know, all new clients insurance only, but we'll still manage the retiree clients. And and to be honest, it was a bit of a selfish move for me because I thought my clients love me. I love my clients. I thought I was going to be a great, you know, option for them. And then over time realizing that, hey, we're not investing in this business. We're not investing in that client experience. We're really, you know, if we're going to just let it sit there and keep managing it, it's not fair for the clients, not fair for the business. Um, and so that's when we partnered with another firm and, and effectively sold those clients off. Gotcha. And and it was really just an idea of going, well, the clients are going to be better served somewhere else with a, with a firm who's investing in in them yeah. um, and it's going to be better for me and it's going to be better for the other, the other firm that we partnered with. But how did the clients take that move? Were they supportive of it? Yeah, they were. Oh, I mean, it's helped. Oh, you know, I knew yeah. you were going to say that. It's, it does hurt a bit, but... I, you know, and it's kind of just about positioning really to genuinely humbly coming to those clients and saying, hey, this is my future um, in doing insurance only advice. You don't need that. You're pre-retirees or you're retirees. You need a business who's going to invest in you. So it wasn't a, we didn't give them the razzle dazzle. It wasn't about, oh, hey, I've sold you off to another firm. It was just a, hey, you're going to be better suited here. Um, and the clients understood that. Yeah. It's funny, we, you know, the business that I work in, decent sized business and there's points in time when I'm working with too many clients and I need to move some of them off for want of a better description and and you, like you said you think all of these clients love you and they're, they're going to be heartbroken if you're going to introduce them to someone else but all of a sudden you do it and it's the the, the barriers in my own head, mm. not not the clients, and it's a whole lot smoother process than what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, and and to, and to be honest, it's kind of given me a fresh perspective on the client advisor relationship. Like we as advisors, we love to think we're in the center of their yeah. financial well being and the financial world, but at the end of the day, clients just want an outcome. If they could flick a switch on the wall to get that outcome that we help them get, then they would do it without it. Just, so. That's why, like, moving forward, I've always talked about how do we get out of the way as advisors? Like, we try and build ourselves into, you know, our importance, but at the end of the day, we just need to deliver that outcome for them. Yeah. So what what was it about the insurance part? Because we were talking before I pressed record on, on here to say, by and large, myself included, advisors don't enjoy doing the insurance work. There's the whole pre-assessments and then you're getting you know, loadings and bits and pieces backwards and forwards from the clients. What was it about insurance that made you want to do that and that alone? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of thought about, well, where's the market opportunity? So that a big part of it is where's the market opportunity, knowing that advisors are going to leave that space. You know, there's a there's a huge market opportunity there. Number two, the, the thing that I'm really passionate about and like at its core, the reason why I became a financial advisor is because I want to help clients make a, a informed, educated decision on you know, their financial lives. Yeah. And, you know, one aspect of their financial lives that's hugely important in terms of mitigating risk and in terms of the cost is insurance. And so advisors are leaving that space. I'm passionate about helping clients make informed, educated decisions on their financial lives. So it just kind of fits really well in that space. And the more I lean into an insurance advice, the more complex it's it becomes, like the more you realize, oh, actually... I just kind of used to recommend based on price, but it's there's so many other factors that come along with you know features, benefits, underwriting, all of those things that um, you you learn as you specialize in it. Yeah, good shot. How do you manage to operate a business that I imagine is profitable at the end of the day? When you like you read a lot about businesses struggling and you know insurance only advisors leaving leaving the industry when they're not getting the hundred ten percent commissions anymore, it's sixty percent or you know wherever the number is. How do you operate a business that can employ people and at the end of the day, no doubt turns a profit when you're reading all of this stuff from other people and, and, and other parts of the industry where they're saying it's near impossible to do it? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a few things there. We kind of came in, given that we didn't have like a legacy book or that we didn't have like these, you know, preconceived ideas of what insurance advice should be. We weren't, you know, um, yeah, we weren't doing a whole bunch of stuff beforehand because we weren't really doing insurance advice. So I kind of redesigned the the idea around, well, how do we remove ourselves? How do we give the outcome? And, you know, given that insurance advice is much more difficult to provide advice and the revenue is much lower, we basically made the decision, where do we place the client's responsibility? So the fact find, the clients fill that in on their own. Um, and they ask all financial questions, all health history questions, all of that stuff. We give that to the client and say, hey, if you want us to help you, here's the questionnaire. Fill it in. can take 10 minutes or can take even half an hour. It can take even longer depending on you know, the complexity of your health history and your financial situation. And so that's kind of a, a, a you know an option that we move where a lot of advisors still today will fill in the fact find with their clients. And so we've gone, well, it's not that profitable adventure doing insurance. And given that there's not, thousands of advisors offering that service um, where I would have placed that on their clients in our desk. And so there's there's a lot of things throughout the whole process that advisors have always done because we've always done it, but now we're putting that back on the client. So like tele-interviews, we always use tele-interviews. And so, you know, historically advisors would help the clients with a personal statement and um, and we don't, we don't get involved in that. Yeah. Do you, are you a big kind of tech business? Are, are you one that's like, You've got some digital fact find or something like referring about referring about that. Is that is that something that you like you've built and you're sending them a link to do it online? Are you giving them a piece of paper? Like how how are you actually? No, yeah, it's all all, all online fact find. So yeah, yeah. yeah, again, you know, basically reinventing our business in 2021 using tools of 2021. You know, I was always interested. I was always super tech friendly, yeah. um, but basically starting from scratch. I was able to just build it all and, you know, we've learned and we've probably made, you know, 500 changes to our fact find since. And when it's a Word doc, to change it, you got to format it and then you got to reprint them. And, but yeah. when it's technology, it's super easy to make a small adjustment. What are you using there for, like, what's what's the system that it's on? Yeah, so we use paper form. So we've built it ourselves, customised the whole thing ourselves. And, and, and again, we're, we're literally in the process of rebuilding that whole fact find again. Does that then somehow tie into a financial planning software of some sorts or you, or you just get it spat out at the end of it? No, yeah. I mean, I I personally can't stand financial planning. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, everyone can't stand it, but we still will use it. So we, our whole like kind of tech stack, our um, CRM system is built on a non-industry financial planning software, so HubSpot. We use it right. And that's the core of our business is on HubSpot. That's how we manage the client's communication. That's how we manage a whole bunch of things. Mm. In terms of advice delivery, literally a Word document that's heavily templated in terms of um, its functionality and an Excel spreadsheet in terms of the needs analysis and a whole bunch of stuff um, and you know, all these variables that go along with advice. Yeah. And then we just go and quote um, on Omnium Direct. So we don't use X-Plan, Advisor Logic, any of that. We just use what we feel is best to breed um, and we use a whole bunch of technology to try and yeah. talk to each other as best as and then so you get your numbers from your quote that goes into your spreadsheet or something does it yeah yeah and then you're building your SOA off the back of it well I uh, yeah so we we yeah so the fact find will give us a whole bunch of financial information we put it into our needs analysis template and mm-hmm. you know income debt you know all a whole bunch of factors that go ahead with the advice then we get our pre-assessments back which then influences if someone's going to give a mental health exclusion and another insurer isn't, then we'll, we'll you know, happily lean towards that. Yeah. Then a whole bunch of factors in our Excel spreadsheet, which is like if we expect an exclusion and they've got default cover, well, our, our default position as a business is to keep that default level of cover and so you know, reduce the life and DVD by 156 grand or whatever that yeah. host life cover is. And, um, and so all of that gets built in and then we basically come to a – you know, depending, there could be six different quote alternatives based on, you know, the complexity of the client's situation. Yeah. And then the power planners will go on and put that into a Word document. Yeah. You mentioned before we've pressed record, you're charging fees for this kind of work. Can you talk through how that, how you're operating that? Yeah. So our initial, so we do a 15 minute phone call for anyone who comes into our business. Um, and then if they, from that phone call, that's when they get sent the um, engagement um, fee. So it's, um, three hundred and thirty dollars for individuals. Yep. Four ninety five for couples. 
four ninety five for self employed singles. I oh, know six sixty for self employed singles and what eight hundred for um, couples that are self employed. But so they're 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 paying that initial engagement fee, and that's when they're getting the fact finder saying you want to help you got to fill this thing in before we exactly have it. Yes, so they basically phone call straight. They pay us a fee. Yeah, they get a fact find, and then we go and produce the advice document off the back of yep. the fact find. Yep. And then is it are you taking commission as well? Yeah. Assume you're not just operating on eight hundred dollars from the yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yes, we can take commission. Don't mean how much margin, but if we weren't <laughs> taking commission, it'd be nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So what's the size of the team? How many people in the sky? So we have currently seven advisors in the business, including me. I know I'm not I'm a fake advisor at the moment. Um and we've got three professional year advisors yeah. um coming through. So they're gonna second half of PY in October. Yes, yeah. super exciting. Um and we've got a lot of support staff in the Philippines. So okay. the whole business is I think around forty people. Yeah. In the whole business. It's pretty big. Yeah. But you're finding enough people that have a bit of a passion for insurance to have to have seven advisors or so, including you, and then the PYs coming through. There's enough people still out there that have the yeah I think, for insurance. I mean, and yes, very. It, it it was harder at the very beginning to you know some of our first advisors. They basically had to come to terms with the fact that they were going to do insurance only. But once they've been in it, it was the same as me. Your, your passion for it grows because at the at the core, what do we like as advisors? We want to help them make informed decisions on mm-hmm. their that helps their financial lives. Insurance is is an incredibly important part of that, um, and so it's about you know our business. All we ever think about is we just want to you know help educate and inform our clients about the insurance that we believe they need, mm-hmm. and then and then they'll make an educated decision whether they go ahead or not. Yep. So we don't you know because they're paying us a fee, they're they're filling in the fact line like they want insurance. We're not here giving people the razzle dazzle or trying to yes. slog them insurance. Yes. They want it. They know they need it. They've identified that they need it. We're just here to help them provide the solution of you know what yeah what level what insurer what are the terms yeah so that's what we we're talking about before we pressed record it's like they they're coming to you because they want insurance mm. advice they're not coming to you like in a general financial advice business so you get a lot of people come into you saying hey I'm in this particular position I don't know what I should do next yeah and then you're working through all of these things part of that is you might be identifying hey I think you need some insurance and then maybe you are trying to convince them a little bit more because they weren't in their mind they were coming to you because they wanted insurance advice they were coming to you because they were earning a certain amount of money and they Mm. were wanting to plan for their retirement or whatever plan for their future but in your world they're coming to you for insurance advice so they're they're expecting you're going to turn around and say we recommend you have x y and z worth level of insurance and that's where i think you know advisors are probably painted with a a little bit of a, a, a harsh brush in terms of like I just got sold insurance. Well, no, we identified that any insurance because it's a massive body of you know risk mitigation yeah. strategy. So it may be a bill we're selling you, but it's because you need it. And so that's historically, and and yes, there may have been, to, and there is conflicts. Of course, there's conflicts. So that's why it's like how historically how hard do people sell it or not sell it. But with our business, we're not, our advisors coming into the business don't feel like they're coming into a sales role. They're like, we're all educated advisors. We know what we're doing, and it's just about going. How do we make the complex, which is insurance, which a lot of advisors think it's not as complex, but but it, it can get very complex when you're talking about health history and you know different outcomes. Now, how do we make that as simple as possible for the clients to make an informed decision? Yeah, and the decision is yes, maybe I, I want to change it, or no. Yeah, that's really the three outcomes that we get. And so for you know six six or seven advisors that you've got. Keeping busy, there must be a bit of work coming your way then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we yeah we got like we're, our aim this year is we want to get twelve hundred applications. Yeah, right. um, twelve hundred people insured. Yep, it's our kind of target, and we're a little bit behind that at the moment. We're pro, we'll, we're projecting we'll catch up by the end of the year. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, because we we can't control the insurers accepting. We can control if you know, twelve hundred people go ahead. And apply for insurance, and we, you know, we get ninety five percent of people insured if we're hitting application because of all the the research we're doing yeah. at the front end. You'd cut it off beforehand if if they couldn't get insurance anyway. You already knew before you put the application. Well, right. I mean, get there. If they get straight decline, we actually offer them a refund. Yeah, and say, hey, we can, there's no point. I was doing a whole bunch of work to tell you getting declined by everyone. Now, if there's you know, then oh, turn like 
BMI learning because they're overweight, then you know we're going to kind of work through that and address that as a professional advisors. But yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of clients, you know, our conversion rates were relatively high because they're coming, they, they want insurance. Where do they all come from? Like what's your marketing type function to, to find 1,200 people or your wall to do 1,200 applications a year? Yeah, so it's a, it's a broad level. So we've got great referral partners. Our bigger referral partners come from podcasters. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, like content creators that's kind of exploded. Um, yeah, yeah. As as you would have said yeah, I mean, that's with, that's with that. your own stuff. Like, yeah. It's it's exploded. People want to get information yeah. on financial content. So um, that's a big part of it. Other advisors, you know, mortgage brokers, you know, the, the normal referral partners. Yeah. But yeah, we we find that there's a really long tail of advisors just sending us one client a month um, because- no, they may have heard of us, or yeah. they they heard about our fee because we're super transparent about our fees. We, we there's no question mark about what that someone's going to get charged up front. Yeah, so we kind of get a lot of small level of referrals, but they they trickle in. Mm-hmm. Do you yourself like you're on podcasts and bits and pieces? Do, do you yourself do any kind of active marketing? We do. Yeah, we've got a marketing team in the business. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we've got like. A video editor. We've got a content writer and a, and a graphic designer yeah. in, the, in the business. So we tr- we do a lot of webinars. So once a month we do webinars, um, and then the team grab that video and chuck it up and do do their thing. Yeah, yeah. Now we were talking before about this idea of kind of a last last topic, and again, kind of completely off topic from insurance. But we were talking about this idea of seconding advices, and. I, I thought we would try and capture it on the podcast because it was an interesting, interesting topic. One you and I talked me before about this idea of like I've only ever worked in this one business mm. that I'm in, and at different points in my career, uh, it ain't thought, gee, gee, wouldn't it be great to go and work in this particular business a day a week or that particular business a day a week to just kind of learn? We're having this type of chat, and you're being, you know, thinking the same kind of thing. Do you want to talk yeah. about it? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we've got. We've got a very clear framework for our professional year advisors. So, uh, and and that's a big part of our growth strategy is to bring young advisors into the business because, you know, older advisors who have been doing insurance for a long time, you know, th- the stereotype is they're stuck in their ways. And, you know, and we use a lot of technology, I mean, in our business. And so we want to grow the pie of advisors. So we've got a very clear growth path for new advisors. Yep. The downside is we only do insurance and the downside is the way we do business may be you know, something different to everyone else. So yeah. there's a little bit of it is helping our advisors know the grass may not be always greener. <laughs> like, hey, we're pretty good. And instead of me telling you how good we are, like go and see other business, like go and see really successful businesses yeah. to then compare us. Yes. And so we can sharpen up our business. If we're not good, we can get better. And also just knowledge sharing. Like as a lot of like business owners, I, I just had like a two hour lunch with another business owner talking about, you know, just being very open, asking very direct questions of each other about what it's like. But you can only learn so much. Yeah. Once you're in their business and working a day a week and getting seconded into their business, that'd be an awesome way to really see what it's like because, you know, you're not going to just hear how amazing someone is or, you know, until you're, until you're there and see if it is good or bad. And it's like it's you, like a lot of that happens at your kind of level. You know, you, you, you own a business, you're a social person, you've got a bit of a profile in the industry and so forth and so you're going to be out chatting to people. You're going to different events and so forth. But then you've got advisors that are coming up that that aren't doing that. They're they're doing their professional year or they're very early on in their career and they haven't yet kind of opened their eyes to what else is mm. else is out there. It'd be amazing to try and do it. As saying, my before we press record, my wife works in the kind of in the hospital system, and that, and it's really common for someone to work two or three shifts a week permanently in one particular hospital, but then pick up the casual shifts somewhere else. And they can then very easily see, is, is the grass actually greener in a different hospital? Mm. And they have it pretty good there. Uh, you know, we, 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 I think you and I kind of concluded that it's near impossible to do what we're proposing here. I don't know where it goes, but it would be amazing to be able to to do that somehow. Yeah, and I, th- I, think, it, I think it would take a lot of uh, humility and maturity from yeah. business owners to do it, like to be humble enough to go go and look somewhere else. And if we're not good enough and they're better than that, then we are. Then yeah. we're going to lose you, you might very well. You may permanently. Yes, yeah. 
And so as a business owner, you've got to be like humble enough to go, well, we may not be the best, yeah. but then it, it'll level us up to go, well, if we're losing people because they're going there, then I've got to be better because, you know, team members, like advisors move around they and, and they should move around and they can move around and, and no one's locked to any business. It's just a matter of how do we freely let people move around. And I mean, I'll, I'll put my hand up. I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to think about any of my team members going because we, we're remote. So like how much can they learn if they're remote? <laughs> like I'm trying to think of how do we, how would we actually structure it in yeah. my business? It would be difficult. I could easily bring someone in, but it would require that team member to want to go and drive to the city. If yeah, yeah. It's a city back. Yeah, all that says, I mean, we're sitting here at our office in the city recording this. So, so someone coming into here, but then that's, as we said before, we press record, like it's, it, it's very difficult for uh, one of your advisors to walk in here and actually be productive as an advisor mm. day one. In, as you kind of said before in the hospital type system, uh, you, you're doing a particular role. That role is fairly similar from one hospital to the next. You just might not know where things are in the particular storage cupboard. Broadly, we're also in financial advice doing the same kind of things, but there's just maybe it's just us getting in our own way. Is, is there really that much in the way of being able to do that, there's the whole licensing bit, to which is a whole minefield. But yeah, and as we're talking, as we're mulling over this idea, I'm thinking more privacy. Yeah, well, that's an issue because you know, our clients' data will be, you know, shared. Yeah. Someone is not explored by that. Like this, unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of of those concerns. But even just even just engaging in in meetings, that's something that we do as a business. We we. Uh, you know, me and and the advice team lead, we jump in on our advisor meetings to give them feedback. Because, and one of our advisors been advising for like twenty years, yeah. and and he's like, I haven't had anyone in my meeting for fifteen years, and I'm just there going, well, I'm like, you know, the best tennis players in the world have coaches, so yeah. our advisors should as well. Like, I'm not the be all and end all of insurance advice, but I can sit there and engage and understand where I think. You know, the client maybe didn't understand this because I can kind of look back and and help coach our advisors. And that's something that, you know, we could easily, what we could potentially do is just second to meet client meetings would be relatively easy. Yeah. But you need the client to still agree to it before they come in. And it'll be, it'll be too difficult in that regard. We won't be able to solve it. But, but putting the idea out there for anyone that's happening to be listening, the, uh, Sitting in on the meetings is a good one because, like, you got the the advisor that has had someone sitting in there for fifteen years. But you can then, if you're then sitting in on someone else's more you know, more junior meeting, you can say, "Well, this Jeff's did this thing. Have you thought about doing that?" And the other yeah. meeting, yeah, you you can be the conduit to sharing some of the ideas around and then about the team. And that's what we talked to our team. It's not about us monitoring you and and checking yeah. up on how you're going. It's actually about because we're remote. How do we do that knowledge sharing as a business? Like. Hey, you know, Asari, you're doing amazing things in this area of the, the meeting, and this person's struggling. I can actually distill that information and go, Hey, you know, this other person watches Asari's meeting from these minutes when she's presenting this section of the advice or the commissions or whatever it is. Um, go and watch a few of them because I think she's nailing it. And, and that's really the purpose is to help coach them, but then also that knowledge sharing. Perfect. Phil, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. No worries. Pleasure to chat with you finally. Yeah, I'm very it. And, uh, and not get a podcast at the same time. Fishing. <laughs>